During World War II, soybeans played a crucial role in the American war effort. The US government promoted soybean cultivation to address shortages of traditional fats and oils due to disrupted supply chains. Henry Ford was a strong advocate for soybeans. He invested heavily in research and even created a soybean car in 1941, which had a plastic body made from soybeans. This car was lighter than traditional steel cars and showcased the potential of soybeans in industrial applications. The car eventually did not take off, but Ford's vision and the wartime push significantly boosted soybean production in the United States, making it a major agricultural crop. The US produces nearly 35% of all the soy in the world. But what exactly is a soybean? Why is it called soy? Originally domesticated in China, it was not till the Dutch introduced a very tasty dark colored sauce from Japan called shoyu to the rest of the world that the beans from which that sauce was made became popular around the world and was named after the sauce shoyu, so soy or soya beans. The soybean is a legume like chana, rajma, tur, moong, urad, etc. It is a nutritional powerhouse. A quick comparison with chana makes this easy to appreciate. It has almost twice the amount of protein as chana. And it is one of the very few plant sources that is complete protein. It has all the essential amino acids. It also has half the carbohydrates of chana. So you might wonder, why aren't we all eating soybean masala with puri instead of chole? You see, unlike chana, rajma or other dals, simply soaking and pressure cooking the soybean does not really work. Because soy has high levels of an oligosaccharide called stachyos that we cannot digest. And when our gut bacteria ferment it, causes an uncomfortable amount of flatulence. This also happens with rajma and chana, but they have higher levels of another oligosaccharide, raffinose. That seems to cause less problems. This is why we still mostly eat chana or rajma masala, but not soybean masala. Which then brings us to oil extraction. Soybeans, like groundnuts, which by the way are also a legume and not a nut, are very rich in fats compared to other dals. When the first soybean oil plants were set up in India, we began to wonder what to do with the leftover cakes after the oil was extracted. That was when we started adopting the technique of extrusion, which takes the leftover cakes and turns them into textured soy protein. These soy chunks have been sold with brand names like Nutri Nugget, meal maker, etc. and have become a popular alternative to paneer for vegetarians in India with the added advantage of being lactose free. Remember, almost 70% of South and East India is lactose intolerant, 30% in the North. Soy chunks are almost 50% protein by weight, but not everyone likes the cardboard like taste. From then on, India has slowly adopted a range of soy based products. 1. Soy milk made by soaking soybeans, blending it with water, heating it and then filtering it through a cheesecloth to separate the milk from the solids. This is an alternative to dairy milk. It has the same amount of protein at almost half the calories and it is typically fortified with vitamins A, D, B12 and calcium so that it matches up to regular milk. 2. Tofu Made by heating soy milk, adding a coagulant like magnesium chloride, calcium sulfate or lime juice and then using a cheesecloth to drain the liquid. This is an alternative to paneer and it has much less fat. 3. Soy flour Made by dehulling, roasting and powdering soybeans into a fine flour used to enrich things like atta with extra protein. So the high protein atta you buy will usually include soy flour. 
Southeast Asia, where soybean has been used for millennia, have also developed fermented soy products that are nutritionally even better than using soy directly. The most popular example is tempeh. It's made by soaking, dehulling and cooking soybeans and then fermenting it with a fungus called rhizopus. The mold breaks down complex carbohydrates, making it more easily digestible and makes a lot more micronutrients bioavailable, resulting in a nutty flavored, firm textured, high protein food. You can use tempeh like paneer in your dishes. Another key advantage, fermentation by rhizopus produces small amounts of vitamin B12, something that otherwise is not available in a plant-based diet. It is important to note that roughly 0.5% of the world's population is allergic to soy. It is one of the big eight food allergens, along with milk, eggs, peanuts, tree nuts, fish, shellfish, and wheat. Those with soy allergies must strictly avoid all soy-based foods. But to put things in perspective, far more people are allergic to milk and wheat gluten than soy because soy is relatively new to India. It is not surprising that there are a lot of myths surrounding it. Let's look at some of the most common ones. One, soy has phytoestrogens that will, one, increase the risk of breast cancer in women, two, reduce testosterone in men. Soybeans contain isoflavones, which are compounds that can weakly bind and activate estrogen receptors in the body which is why they are called phytoestrogens. However, what all these scaremongers fail to mention is that these plant compounds are thousand times weaker than actual human estrogen. Numerous clinical studies show that consuming soy foods does not lower testosterone levels, decrease sperm concentration or cause any feminizing effects like men developing breasts. Soy isoflavones do not feminize men or impair male fertility. In fact, it is actually beneficial. Observational studies link higher soy intake to a slightly lower risk of prostate cancer and help lower LDL, bad cholesterol. So men, enjoy your soy. Science shows that soy will not decrease your manliness. The idea that real men don't eat tofu is just a silly, unscientific stereotype. And women, breast cancer rates are lower in Asian countries where soy intake is high compared to Western countries. Studies also show that women who regularly ate soy foods when they were young have a lower risk of developing breast cancer. The exact opposite of what scaremongers keep telling you on the internet. Only thing to keep in mind, eating whole soy foods like tofu, soy milk, soy chunks, etc. are safe. If you are taking soy isoflavone supplements without consulting a doctor, they contain much higher phytoestrogen levels than normal food. So you might want to avoid that. As a general rule, don't take supplements without consulting a doctor and finding out if you have a specific deficiency. Two, soy protein, since it's from a plant, is not complete protein. Soybeans are one of the few complete proteins from plants, meaning they contain all nine essential amino acids that the body cannot produce and must obtain from food. This makes soy an important source of protein for vegetarians and vegans. And the protein in soy is highly digestible in comparison to other dals. And to appreciate that, let's understand the concept of PDCAS protein digestibility corrected amino acid score. It is a measure of how easily digestible and bioavailable protein from a specific food is. It is a score from 0 to 1. And a score of 0.7 means that if you eat 100 grams of that protein, your body will effectively absorb 70 grams of it. Eggs and milk have a PDCAS of 1 making it the best protein sources we have. Soy has a PDCAS of 0.91, which is similar to beef, 0.92. In contrast, regular dals have much lower PDCAS values. 
Three, soy is genetically modified. In India, soy is not genetically modified. It's possible that some imported soybean oil could come from GMO soybeans. That's all. That aside, we have several decades of data to show that GMO soy poses no risks to humans. So most GMO fear mongering is just evidence-free social media activism. That said, it is fair to point out that some of the activism against GMO is targeted at exploitative business practices by giant corporations against poor farmers in the rest of the world. So if that is why you do not want to eat GMO crops, that's fine. But there are no nutritional reasons to avoid them. In summary, soy is one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. It is a plant, therefore more sustainable and yet has protein quality close to animal sources. It is rich in fats and even waste products of soy processing are used as animal feed. Without soy, vegan diets would be impractical. So ignore the bits and add soy to your diet.